Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am feeling creative. I haven't sat down and done clay or just like made something just for me in a while. So I thought today I'm gonna do that. You guys happen to love my last clay with me video. So I just kind of thought I would throw on the camera and bring you guys along for this one as well. I think what I'm gonna make today is a little utensil holder. I'm gonna use the coiling method and make it just as if I was making a vase, but it's gonna be for my clay utensils because if you can see here, I usually just keep them in a wooden box. And I think it would be cute to have a nice little ceramic vase. And it's been something I've been meaning to do for so long now. And I'm like, nope, today I'm gonna sit down and do it. I wanna thank Canon for sponsoring this video. Oh my God, what a dream. I can't believe I'm even saying that. I wanna quickly introduce you to the Canon PowerShot Pick. This compact little camera is so perfect for YouTube and content creators. It's so easy to set up and use. I'm actually gonna use it to film some of today's video. I just Bluetooth connect it to my phone. It can automatically detect faces and subjects and can automatically track and compose images and videos. It also has built-in image stabilization, which ensures each scene is smooth and sharp, which saves a lot of time when you're editing your footage. The app allows you to play around and customize all of the settings. It also has a feature that allows you to play back and delete the footage instantly via the playback menu. If you'd like to check out more info regarding the PowerShot pick, I'll have Canon's website linked below in the description box, as well as a direct link to where you can purchase the Canon PowerShot pick yourself. I'm gonna have it set up to my left over here to give you guys a different view and angle as I'm making my little vases. It's also hands-free, so when I have clay all over my hands, I don't have to constantly change the camera angle, which is amazing. Let's get started, shall we? I'm not gonna make the same mistake as I did last time and not clip up my hair because that was so annoying. I've also asked you guys on Instagram to send in some questions. So I'm gonna answer those kind of as we go as well. I don't know how many I'm gonna get through because there are so many, but I'm gonna try and do as many as I can. I'm gonna start off by opening up my clay, obviously. This is a really big bag of clay. I'm probably not gonna go through all of this. Isn't that just the most satisfying thing ever? Cutting a block of clay. The first thing I'm gonna do is roll out a slab and then I'm gonna like cut out the base of the vase. And the first question I'm gonna answer is very relevant to me at the moment. It is how do I deal with creative blocks and burnouts? And personally, over the last few years of me working as a creative and kind of like monetizing my hobby of ceramics, I've gotten really good at recognizing the cycle of burnout and creative blocks. So when I'm feeling this way, I've found what helps me personally is to just take a step back. I'm just gonna use my rubber kidney to smooth out this slab before I cut out the base shape. But what was I saying? When I take a step back, I kind of refer to mainly taking a step back from my ceramic production. The YouTube and like filming everything I have always really enjoyed and I find it doesn't require as much like planning or it does, but it's different to like thinking of new ideas for like a product that I'm gonna sell. So I definitely like to take little breaks from making collections and drops. They aren't like usually hectically long. I'll probably take like two to four weeks off making something. And then during that time, I like to just like surround myself with friends, go on mini little getaways to like give myself a new environment to maybe spark ideas. I also love like watching YouTube and kind of following along other creatives. Also a little reminder when you're making something, Clay shrinks once it dries and then is also fired. So I always make my things that 20% bigger than what I actually want them to be when they come out. So now I'm gonna use the leftover clay that I use for the shape. I'm not gonna worry about wedging it because I'm just squeezing it into like long snake sausage kind of shapes anyway, because this is what I'm gonna use to start building my vase. This is the coiling method. I think I mentioned that before and it's super simple. You're going to be able to like pick it up pretty easy. Oh, <laughs> you're the best. Thank you. I'll just bought me up pasta because I'm starving. I haven't eaten today. What an absolute gem. Mm -hmm. 
because I don't have any food in my teeth. You want all of the pieces to be roughly a similar height. So I'm gonna kind of start off with something like this. And you're gonna score around the whole edge. And then I'm really bad at speaking with like <laughs> ceramic technical terms. You don't want the coils to be too thin because as you build your vase up, the walls will just cave in. So be mindful of that as you're doing it. I totally forgot I have this little spinning wheel which makes building vases so much easier. So I'm pretty much just going to keep following that technique that I just showed you until the walls get much, much higher. I will say everybody is different and personally you can probably tell from my style of ceramics. I love things to be a little bit imperfect and kind of have a few bumps and dents because I feel like it gives them character and if I wanted perfect ceramics I would go to a shop and buy something not handmade. Following on from my last question, somebody asked what my self-care routine is. On a day where I'm typically just feeling like yuck, I might be like really exhausted or have my period or something. I have a pretty like stock standard self-care routine slash reset routine that I follow. I usually jump in the shower and <laughs> completely just like wash my hair, shave my entire body, get out, do like my extensive skincare routine. Maybe chuck a face mask on, blow dry my hair, and then after doing like all of that self-care stuff, I genuinely do feel significantly better. Other forms of self-care though that I find when I do kind of semi-regularly prevent me to getting to that point of just like feeling super down or yuck. If the weather's nice or even if it's not, I just try and like go for a dip in the ocean a couple of times a week. Also a form of self-care for me is just like going for a long walk by myself and putting on a podcast or listening to like a good playlist. Another favorite of mine recently, which I've been trying to do more, is just going to a sauna. It's like an hour session that I usually get and it is so relaxing. I just go in there with a book, chuck on, like I said, my favorite playlist. I have a reset playlist on Spotify, which always makes me feel better when I'm in a bit of a funk. By the way, I'm now like taking this wooden tool. I have no idea the technical names of tools. It's really bad, I should. I'm just using it to like push down the edges. Do I use the single fire technique and what temperature do I fire my ceramics to? I mainly use the single fire technique. The lady who taught me solely used single fire. So that's kind of just how I've been taught. However, as time's gone on and I've like kind of branched out on my own and just like started experimenting and things, I occasionally bisque fire, but for the most part, yes, I do single fire. I don't know, it's just what works for me. And if anything, I prefer how the pieces come out. I definitely don't find any issues with like the strength of the pieces. And then again, for temperature that I fire to, it depends on the clay that I'm using. But nine out of 10 times, I use a mid fire clay, which means that I fire to 1,200 degrees Celsius. This one is super nice. I loved your London vlogs back in 2019. Do you have any plans to go back slash what are your upcoming travel plans? This question came up a lot because I have definitely been dropping some hints that I have travel plans for this year. At the end of June, Al and I are heading over to Europe for a few months. So far we booked to go for exactly eight weeks, but we're actually already looking at extending it by a few weeks because of work opportunities over there. Traveling and working is something that Alex and I have literally talked about since we met. And we're very fortunate enough to be in the position now where we can do so. So when I say working, Alex is a photographer slash videographer. And sometimes I do creative direction for him, but I also do YouTube obviously, and I have my brand. So yeah, we have plans to visit so many different places. I'm gonna be vlogging the whole time that we're there and also creating like blog posts on my blog about where we go, where we stay, etc. Al also has a bunch of really cool brands that we're shooting campaigns for, which is really, really cool. We're kind of collaborating in that sense. So you guys will have to stay tuned to see um, more of that. I definitely will vlog like a lot of the behind the scenes of all of that stuff. But I'm definitely so excited for the content that I'm going to create over there. For a portion of the trip, we're also traveling with one of our best friends, Liam, and then meeting up with a whole heap of friends along the way as well. <laughs> so I'm so excited. It just feels honestly surreal to be able to travel again and leave Australia. It's been such a long time, but I just have a really good feeling about this trip. Do you think ceramics is a business you can run from anywhere like travel and work if you find a kiln? 
Personally, I'm not going to be doing ceramics whilst I'm overseas only because A, we're only gone for two months so I know as soon as I get back I'll be like feeling super motivated and inspired to kind of jump back into it but also because ceramics is such a long process i.e. it takes like weeks in total to make the piece, have it dry, then bisque and then fire and then glaze and then refire again or if you single fire that's a different story as well um, but it requires you to be in one place for like at least a month to six weeks if you're just like kind of moving to a new country then yeah you definitely could do that if i was to like move to a country next year or something i would definitely look into that but if you're going on like a shorter trip where you're only going to be in like one place for a week or like less um, then it kind of becomes a little bit tricky. Friendship breakups, how to know when to let someone go. This is a sad question, but it's also something that is just so normal and everyone goes through, especially in your 20s because we're just changing so much. I feel like the term breakups is a bit dramatic or not. I feel like it just like makes the situation sound worse than it is, unless there has been like a specific event where the person has done something really nasty or like malicious towards you but in general just like drifting is so common and so normal because we all just grow in different ways i feel like it's really important to take note of how you feel after hanging out with someone whether you feel really like positive and happy um, and like fulfilled or if you feel like drained and just kind of down and I don't know, sometimes it might not even be to that extent. You might just not have anything in common or have as much to talk about anymore. There are so many like contributing factors to a friendship drift. More cats? Question mark. <laughs> um, probably not. Honestly, Yoki was like kind of spontaneous and I'm so glad that we got him. But especially because we're going to be traveling in things Whenever we do travel, I always take him to my mom's to look after him, but it's always just another thing to organize. Um, and it's okay with one cat, but if we got another cat or another animal in the equation right now, that's like an extra responsibility to kind of sort out whilst we're traveling. Lucky for us, whilst we're away in Europe. Our housemate is happy to take care of Yoki, so he'll be in good hands, but yeah, I don't think I'll be getting another pet anytime soon. Where do I get my caruffs from? <laughs> I get this question so often. Um, I actually don't have one here to show you. They're just like my little water jugs and cup that comes with it. They are from a brand called Maison Balzac. I don't know if I'm saying it properly, but that's literally how it's spelt. But yeah, anyway, that's where they're from. <laughs> I don't think I need to make this like super duper tall, honestly. So I'm gonna keep building it up, but start making the coils a bit shorter so that it kind of domes in a little bit so that my utensils don't all spill out. What is the meaning behind your tattoos? If you didn't know, they're not very obvious, but I have three very small tattoos that I got ages ago now. Um, the last two that I got was back in 2019. And the meaning behind them, so the first one that I have on my wrist here, it's five dots. And it's kind of family tattoo, so I have like five girl cousins that I'm really close with. They're kind of like the sisters that I never got to have. We each got the tattoo, so each small dot represents us. And then the last like open dot, like circle, represents where I stand in us girls age-wise. So because I'm the youngest, my circle dot is the last on me. Whereas like Zoe, she's the second youngest, so her open dot goes one before that one. I feel like I've just done a terrible job of explaining that, but hopefully you get the gist. Um, and then our mums, who are four sisters, also got the same tattoo. And because my mum is the youngest, hers is exactly the same as mine. So that was my first tattoo. And before getting that, I was kind of like, oh, I'll probably never get a tattoo. Or if I would, it'd have to be like something that means a lot to me, but I just couldn't at the time think of what. And then my cousins came to me and were like, Lols, so we're getting this. Do you want to get it with us? And I was like, oh my God, yes. Like, I love that so much. I then also have a bikini top here. I got that one and a shell on my foot from an artist called Coco LeBerg. She's kind of pretty well known on the Gold Coast. I actually vlogged getting it, I think. I don't know if that vlog's been privated or not. But other than like growing up and loving the beach, <laughs> there's honestly not much meaning behind the bikini and the shell. If I didn't have them now, I probably wouldn't get them. I don't regret it, but I just like don't love them.
I think this is gonna be the last coil that I do because I don't want the bars to be like too tall. Okay, last few questions. Do I ever wish I stuck with just one Instagram account? No, I'm actually really glad I decided to create a business account because my business account is like so obviously not my life, which I like. I feel like if the two accounts were combined, it would make me feel a lot of pressure in that I need to have like a curated feed and it would just lose the aspect of my personal feed actually being about my life. I've mentioned before, but I do fully plan my business account, so Lolita by Lolita, but my Lolita Olympia account is more an accurate representation of my life, um, as much as Instagram is a highlight reel. If I go away and have like a heap of photos from a trip, I'll somewhat plan it. Basically, I don't like the idea of me not being able to post something just because it doesn't match with my feed. Whereas on my business page, from a marketing perspective, it's important for me to have a curated feed that looks all nice together um, so I think the two would clash in that sense what was the budget I started my business with honestly it wasn't much at all because I wasn't intending on starting a business I just bought a few bags of clay and the basic glazes because I was at home in isolation if you didn't know I started my business in the pandemic when COVID was like really bad and I was literally just bought at home um, so I probably spent like $300 buying all of the basic equipment that I needed to be able to do it at home with which by the way I do get questions about the utensils and like clay and things that I recommend to start at home with I always have like my essentials linked down below so I have like the basic tools and just just things that I use and find helpful but yeah considering some people take out loans of like ten thousand plus dollars my business was pretty cheap to start because I think I probably started with like maybe two or three bags of clay and just one or two colors of glaze. Once it did turn into a business for me though, I was reinvesting absolutely everything that I was earning back into my business and I still pretty much do do that. For the first year of me having my business, I was living at home so my outgoings were like pretty small so I didn't really need much to live so that allowed me to reinvest the money back into my business. I'm so close to finishing. I just have this tiny little gap on the side. I think I'm only gonna make one of these. I always forget how long things take to make. And I've literally been sitting here for over an hour making this. So I think we're just gonna cut it at one vase today. This one kind of makes me sad, but it's how to be confident in a world of unrealistic beauty standards. I feel like we've come a long way in the media sharing different body shapes and sizes um, but it's definitely still not perfect. It can be easy to get caught up in thinking that unattainable for some body shape <laughs> is what you have to have in order to feel beautiful but for me ways that I overcome that and kind of feel better about it is the media that I consume so I'm very specific about the pages that I follow on Instagram and the people that I follow I feel like if you're sensitive to that sort of stuff definitely stay away from like what I eat in a day videos just because that is obviously one day in that person's life and it's easy to think oh my god I have to do what they're doing in order to look a certain way and yeah it's just an overall very toxic mindset so I think it's important to be aware that you are a product of what you consume and the kind of people that you hang out with. I like following people who don't airbrush their photos or face tune their photos. I think that's really toxic. I like following brands and people who are very real in the photos that they post. Just like seeing that on a day-to-day -day basis has made me feel better about myself and also just recognize the fact that it's human and normal and actually really beautiful for us to have stretch marks and all of those things because it's what makes us unique. As I'm finishing off this vase, I'm kind of just rounding in the edges. Like I think I told you, you can only really do so much whilst the clay is this wet. Definitely in a few hours, once it dries a bit more, I'm gonna come back and kind of reshape it a little again and just kind of make sure it's drying how I want it to dry. But this is my finished little utensil holder. She's not perfect, but that's why I love it. You'll have to follow along my vlogs because I'll show you guys how I end up glazing this piece. Probably not for a few weeks or so because it has to dry first. 
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been really enjoying making clay videos again. So hopefully you guys are liking them too. I did once again want to thank Canon for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanted to check out the PowerShot pick, I'll have it linked down below. I hope you guys have a good week and I'll see you again really soon.